Hello and welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric, my co-host Mr. Brody, with Purple Monkey, Blue Duck, and Blue Penguin there in the co-host seats. Ready to broadcast game number 44 from the uh, Kali Stremski career replay from his rookie season 1961 using inside pitch baseball. Uh, Red Sox come in with a record of 17 and 26 on the season. They were actually 19 and 24, so the two couple of games behind their pace here. And I believe this is game two of the series with the Orioles. Um, they had a three game set earlier on, and so far in the season, they're two and two against Baltimore. Baltimore actual record coming into this game was 26 and 22. And again, we're just playing the games against the Red Sox. That's why it just says two and two for Baltimore. Um, so as you can see, the rookie Kyle Yastrzemski, who we're doing this replay for, um, did not start in this game. Um, I don't th know if he, let me just check here and see if he uh, played in this game. He did not. He actually had the day off. And this is a Sunday game, so it's probably just probably had a routine day off. Although he has been struggling on this a little bit, so maybe the uh, Pinky Higgins gave him the day off um, to uh, try to regroup and everything. But anyway, we'll, we'll probably most likely make an appearance uh, depending upon the score and everything. Um, later on, maybe a pinch hit or a defensive replacement or something. So um, Rip Rapolsky gotta love that name, is is getting the start in left field today. Um, it's been, when Yastrzemski has had the day off, it's either been Rip Propolsky or, um, yeah, I just had his name in my in my head. I can't think of it now. Um, <laughs> I'll think of it again. Carol Hardy, yeah, Carol Hardy. Um, but Carol Hardy's actually starting in center today. But anyway, um, let's go through... It's going to be Gene Conley on the mound for the Red Sox. It's here at Fenway and um, against Steve Barber for the um, Baltimore Orioles. So Gene Conley has been struggling so far on the season. He comes in with a just a 1-4 record with a 6.81 earn run average. There's 11-14 with a 4.90 average on the earn run average on the actual year. Uh, 52 hits given up in 38 and a third innings um, walking only five though and striking out 20. So let's see if we can get back on track today against the Orioles. The Red Sox would win this game six to five scoring two runs in the bottom of the ninth to pull out a victory here at Fenway. So the Baltimore lineup against Conley is going to be Rush Schneider the left field will lead it off followed by Jackie Brandt in center. Brooks Robinson at third baseman will hit third, followed by Jim Gentile, the first baseman. Batting fifth, the power hitting catcher Gus Triandos. Batting sixth, the shortstop Ron Hansen. Seventh, Whitey Herzog, the future manager, will be in right field batting seventh. Jerry Adair, the future Red Sox, would... Uh, bat eighth and play second and Steve Barber on the hill bats ninth. Rush Schneider is getting a start um, for the injured future manager <laughs> again I'm forgetting his name now um, Dick Williams the future manager of the Red Sox um, I think he's got one more game um, on the DL and then he'll be back but the Red Sox will not be playing the Orioles at that time. So anyway, uh, the defense behind Conley is going to be Rapolsky and left. Rapolsky has got horrible range and a very bad arm, so Rapolsky more an offensive threat. Carol Hardy in center is average range. Jackie Jensen, the best fielder of the, of the three, with above average range, very low error rating, and above average arm. Jack Hardy in center has an average arm. Melzone, Button, Schilling, and Wirtz in the infield. All average range except for Schilling is above average. Schilling the, the best uh, defender there with only a three error rating. Button, known as Booten Button, at short will commit the most errors of the group. And Melzone slightly behind him. Melzone was out for a few days. He's back now in the lineup. 
So they definitely missed his bat. So that and uh, Jim Pagliaroni behind the plate, above average range, but horrible error rating. And basically, if he touches it and it's an error check, he'll commit the error um, with a below, slightly below average arm. Conley on the hill, average range, uh, with a slightly high error rating, with a nine for a pitcher. So Rush Schneider sh steps into the box. He'll lead it off against Conley. Schneider, 292 hitter for the season with a homer and 13 runs bat in, hitting 250 against the Red Sox so far. So Conley looks in for the sign from Pags. Here's the windup and the pitch. 3-6. And that is going to be a foul ball, so we'll roll it again. Four two, and that is going to be a strikeout on Schneider. So Conley strikes out the first batter he sees. One down in the first. Jackie Brandt up now. Brandt two ninety seven for the actual season with sixteen homers, seventy two runs batted in, and he just won thirty three against the Red Sox in four games. Here's the pitch by Conley. And that's going to be a range check there. That is going to be a fly ball to center. Hardy getting a start today. We'll make the catch. So two up and two down for the Orioles. That'll bring up the human vacuum cleaner, Brooks Robinson. Robinson has been on fire against the Red Sox in four games, hitting 400 against them with an RBI and four runs scored. Actuality hit 287 with seven homers, 61 runs batted in. 1961. So Kyle looks in for the sign from Pags. Here's the wind up in the pitch. And that's a possible home run check here. And Conley very susceptible to a home run ball, especially against right handed batters, 1 to 18. So Robinson, not much of a power threat, but he's got a 20% chance, 1 through 4. On the, D, on the blue die roll, on the D20 will be a home run. Let's see. No, it's not a home run. It's a 16. So that is going to be a fly out deep to right. Jensen's there to make the catch, and the Orioles go in order in the first. So Steve Barber on the hill now, getting his first start of the season. He is 18 and 12 on the actual season with one save. 3.34 earned run average, 248 innings pitched, 194 hits allowed, 150 strikeouts, and 126 walks. Now again, that first start of the season against the Red Sox, I should say. It's probably he's probably had more starts, but again, we're just playing the games against the Red Sox. So the defense behind Barber is going to be Snyder in left, Brant in center, Herzog in right. Not a very, not very much range with Snyder having the best range average in left. And Herzog in right, uh, very sure handed, uh, but with a below average arm. Schneider and Brandt in center and, I mean, uh, left and center respectively with average arms. Robinson, Hanson, Adair, and Gentile in the infield. Uh, an excellent infield overall with Robinson. Having the best range at third, Gentile at first, and Hanson at uh, Gentile and Hanson both with above average range at first and shortstop. Adair average range, but very short -handed, more short-handed of the group, with Robinson slightly behind them. Triandos average range, um, below average pass ball rating. Um, like Pagliaroni, though, will commit a ton of errors with a 20 rating, and but does have a above average arm. Barber on the hill, excellent range and a fairly low error rating with a five. The Red Sox lineup against him is going to be Chuck Schilling, the second baseman at will lead it off, followed by Carol Hardy in center. Jackie Jensen, the right fielder hits third. Frank Malzone will bat cleanup. 
and play third. Rip Propolsky getting a start in the left for the rookie Yastrzemski will hit fifth. Jim Pagaroni behind the plate hits sixth. Vic Wirtz all the way down to number six spot is the first baseman. Don Boot and Bud in the shortstop hits eighth, and Gene Conley on the hill bats ninth. So Chuck Schilling comes in with a 260 average on the season. Two homers, 11 runs batted in. He'll lead it off of the Red Sox in the bottom of the first. Pitch by Barber after getting the sign by Triandos. And that's going to be a foul ball. Here's the next pitch, and that will be no. Schilling checks his swing. So it's a 3-2 count now. And next pitch, he'll line out to Gentile at first for out number one. Hardy up now. Hardy hitting 243 in the replay. Three homers and 10 runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Barber. And that is going to be a grounded to short. Hanson up with it over to Gentile for out number two. So two up and two down for the Red Sox. Brings up Jackie Jensen, who's having a fine season, hitting 319. Four homers, 22 runs batted in so far. Hitting about 50 points above his season average. Here's the pitch by Barber. And again. On the appeal, Jensen checks his swing, so 3-2 count. Flies on the Schneider and left, and the Red Sox also go in order in the first, so after one full, no score. So Jim Gentile, he's torn up Red Sox pitching so far in four games. He's hitting 417 with two homers and six runs batted in. 302 for the actual season, 46 home runs and 141 runs batted in. Very dangerous hitter. You definitely want that bases empty when he comes up. The pitch by Conley. Conley very careful with him. And Gentile, who has a very good eye and walks a lot, takes a strike two. So it's three and two the count now. Two, three. And that is going to be a ground ball to Schilling at second. Over for out number one. So Gus Triandos. Also has torn up Red Sox pitching so far, hitting 400, also with two homers and six runs batted in. In 115 games, he hit 244 with 17 homers, 63 runs batted in. In 115 games. Pitch by Conley. And it's going to be a Fenway Park check here. And that's going to be a grounder to Button. And he'll make the play over to Wirtz for out number two. So two up and two down in the second. Brings up the shortstop, Hanson. Hanson, 248 hitter with 12 homers, 51 runs batted in on the season. Here's the windup in the pitch. And that's going to be a fly ball to Hardy in center. He flags it down for out number three. So after one and a half, Baltimore zero, Boston zero. Red Sox will send Melzone, Rapolsky, and Pagliaroni if anybody gets on Wurtz. Now, Zone also off to a great start. In 32 games, he's hitting 340 with five homers and 28 runs batted in. Here's the pitch by Barber. And that's going to be a fly to right. Herzog has it sized up and makes the catch for out number one. Rip Propolsky getting a start. He's made the most of his at bats so far, hitting 389 with an RBI and 18 at bats. Would just have 25 at bats on the season. So a rare start for Rapulski. And he will draw the walk. So good start for the Red Sox here in the, well, actually, one out here in the second. Rapulski not a threat to steal. Very slow. And Pagliaroni up now. Pagliaroni hitting 299 in the replay so far with five homers, 20 home runs batted. So off to a quick start. Pitch by Barber after he looks up back to runner. 
And that's going to be back-to-back -back walks. Back-to-back -back walks with one down. So let him move Rapulski in the scoring position. Rapulski very slow, actually. Pagaroni and Rapulski both very slow runners. Not much speed there. So Vic Wirtz with a chance to put the Red Sox on top first, hitting 269 with six home runs and 17 runs bat in. So he's off to a quick start in the power department. To see him go along here. 3-5, and it's going to be another walk. So Barber, after getting the first out, has walked three batters in a row to load the bases. So Don Budden with a chance to put the Red Sox on top, hitting 318 on the season with 18 runs batted in. So he's driven home quite a few. Let's see if he can add to that total here. Barber looks in for the sign from Triandos, looks at the runners, kicks and delivers. And ooh, is he going to get hit by a pitch? Possibility. No. So Button, Button avoids getting hit by the pitch and flies out to center. See if that's going to be deep enough to score the run. I don't think it's going to be as Rapulski does not have much speed. And no, it's not. It's not deep enough. So Rapulski will hold that third. Not going to chance it. So Conley with a chance to help his own cause here and give Get some runs in. Conley, not a bad hitting pitcher. 219 on the actual season. 182 in the replay so far. With a run score chance to get his first RBI here. Did knock in eight and actually hit two home runs. So is it a chance for him to hit, go long here? Which would be nice. 3-3. Three, three. Ooh, that's going to be a Fenway Park check here. 4-2. And that is going to be a possible base hit here. And that is going to be a base hit. That is going to score two. So a two-run single. Let's see here. Paglaroni with two outs. He was off on the pitch. That's why his base running is up to five. And also, the trailing runner advances on throw. So he's the trailing runner. So he will advance. So Gene Conley with a two-run single. Puts the Red Sox on top, 2 nothing. So Connolly does have a little bit of speed, has a three pace running. So two Red Sox with a two out, two run single by the pitcher, Connolly. So Chuck Schilling, top of the order up now. He's 0 for 1. See if he can add to the Red Sox lead. <laughs> Not sure exactly what that is, but 1-6. And that is going to be a base hit for Schilling. And that will score Wurtz from third. Conley will move to third. He's off with the pitch. And it's a 3 nothing Red Sox lead. So the Red Sox with a 2 out rally here. So Carol Hardy up now. Hardy 0 for 1. As Triandos goes out to talk to Barber. Goes back behind the plate. Barber looks in for the sign. Looks at the runners. Kicks and delivers. And whatever he said must have worked because he strikes out Hardy to end the inning. But the Red Sox plate three, highlighted by the two run, two out single by the pitcher Gene Conley, and it's three nothing Red Sox as we head to the third. So Conley now with a three run lead. He'll face Herzog, Adair, and Barber, the bottom third of the order. So Herzog. Hitting 290, a hit 291 with five homers, 35 runs batted in, and 61. Is the windup in the pitch? And that will be a fly ball to left. Rapolsky is there and makes the catch for out number one. Then I'll bring up Jerry Adair. Adair, 264 hitter for the season. For the season, nine homers and 37 runs batted in. All right, find out the source of that noise. Is the other computer? We had something open there. <laughs> so Mr. Brody's coming back here now. There he is, back in his co-host seat there. 
All right, so Adair up there now with one down. Pitch by Conley. Oh, and a possible home run check, and Adair is a righty, so Adair definitely is a th home run threat. Oh, but it's a 19 roll, so it's beyond the range, so it's not going to be a home run. Not much of a, only a 10% chance of it not being on there, and we get the, get the right roll there. So that is going to be a line out to short, but it makes the catch for out number two. So that'll bring up Steve Barber. Barber just a, not a bad hitting pitcher. Does have a little bit of pop, 163 with two homers and six runs batted in 80 at-bats. So he'll, one, he'll hit one from time to time. Definitely not an automatic out. However, he does strike out now quite a bit. And that'll do it for the Orioles in the third. So after two and a half, three nothing Red Sox. So Jensen, Melzon, and Rapulski, if anybody gets on Paglaroni up against Steve Barber. Jensen 0 for 1 so far. And a good start as Jensen draws the walk. That's the fourth walk given up by Barber. Those walks did prove costly as all three of those base on balls would come home to score. Hopefully that trend will continue here in the bottom of the third. So Frank Melzone up now. Melzone 0 for 1. And that's going to be a football to left. And Snyder's there for to make the catch. One down. Rapulski walked and scored his first time up. And he will walk again. So Rapolsky with a good eye. Actually, probably more like Barber with his wildness. <laughs> so first and second, both runners on there with one down. Can we have a repeat of last inning? Pagliaroni also walked and scored. Let's see if he can get a walk here. Four, five. No, just missed that walk there. Actually, no, he's a righty, so that wouldn't have worked. So 4-5, and it's going to be a range play at Fenway Park. Ooh, and this is a split chance here. Good possible ability here. Oh, and that's going to be a double for Pagliaroni. And yes, as a range check, as Herzog as with poor range does not get to that. That should score at least one. Jensen will score. And Rapulski will also score all the way from first. As that goes into the right field corner. And Pagaroni will be held at oh, hold at second. So a two-run double for Pags increases the Red Sox lead to five nothing now. Oh, I see why Wurtz, Wurtz is batting so low is because he's not so great against left-handed batters being a lefty. That's why he's down further in the lineup. Makes sense. Wurtz with a chance to add to the Red Sox lead. Oh, error check on the ground. And that is going to be, no, that's going to be a, ooh, it would have been a double if it was a righty, but it is a fly out to right. Possibility for Pagaroni the tag. He's not very fast, but Herzog's got a poor arm, so we'll see. No, it's a six roll, so he will stay put. That two um, arm there got added to Pagaroni's running ability there, I think. No, actually, no, he only has a three, so probably, oh, because it was hit the right field, that's why. That's where he gets the plus one. So Barber seems to be tiring a little bit here, so there is action in the Baltimore bullpen. And let's see who, let's see who might be up here. And it looks like uh, Hoyt Wilhelm is starting to loosen up there a little bit. Hoyt Wilhelm would take the loss in the actual game, pitching two and a third innings, allowing two runs. All right, so Don Button up now. Button 0 for 1.
And that's going to be a ground ball at the second. Adair has it over the first to end the inning. But the Red Sox add to the lead. They score two, and it's now 5 nothing Red Sox. So again, the walks prove costly, as I believe both, both of the walks scored. Once again, let me check here quickly. Jensen and Rapulski, yeah. So I know Rapulski did, and Jensen, yeah. So all five runs have been the result of walks for the Red Sox. So, so Barber's walks have been costly, as they usually are. So Conley back on the hill now with a five-run lead. Schneider up now. He struck out against Conley his first time up. And that's going to be a pop-up to third mill zone. It's under it and makes the catch for out number one. Brant up now. Brant 0 for 1. Red Sox could use an easy victory. And no walk as he takes a strike 2. So 3 and 2 to count on Brant. And he grounds the next one to Bud and up with it over to Wurtz for out number 2. So Brooks Robinson up now 1. And he fouls on off. Back in the box. And possible error check. And that is going to be a ground ball to second. Schilling very short-handed. Is able to come up with it over to Wirtz. Route number three. So one, two, three, go the Orioles in the top of the fourth. So up to three and a half. It's five nothing. Bo Sox. So Conley up now helped his own cause with a two-run single. Steps in against Barber. Nope, does not get hit by pitch. And will ground it to Gentile. He'll take it to the bag himself for out number one. So Schilling up now. One for two with an RBI. An RBI single. And he'll ground out to Robinson at third. Easy play over to Gentile for out number two. So two quick outs for the Red Sox. Brings up Hardy. He's 0 for 2. Is Barber's only strikeout victim so far. And we have a range check here at Fenway Park. I'm sorry, not just a Fenway Park check, not a range check. And this is now it's a range check, and that will be a flyout. It's a twenty. So one, two, three, go the Red Sox. Barber needed that as we head to the top of the fifth. Five nothing Red Sox. Gentile, Triandos, and Hanson up against Conley, who's been cruising along so far. That's all we're gonna say. And. I believe that's the first base runner. It is. It's a walk to lead off the fifth. So Triando's up now 0 for 1. So Wirtz will hold him on. Oh, and this is a Finway Park check here. 1, 2. And that's going to be the first hit. And he's going to go to second for a double. Gentile will hold that third. So the first base hit off Conley there. Perhaps I shouldn't even mentioned it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say anything specifically, but I kind of gave a hint, so who knows. Anyway. So second and third now with nobody out. So the Orioles have something going for the first time here in the top of the fifth. Hanson up now. Hanson 0 for 1. Oh, and it's going to be a no wild pitch. Good. Oh, good. He's not does not commit any wild pitches, so that is good. And only a one to four pass ball. So he's back in the box after a ball. Nice block by Pagliaroni. And he'll strike out Hansen for the first start of the inning. Herzog up now. 0 for 1. Looking to put the Orioles on the board. Oh, Conley thought he had strike three, but it takes ball three, so full count now on Herzog. And that's going to be a ground ball. That's probably going to get a 
run home here. We're going to go for the auto out. We need outs now. So the Orioles will get on the board as Schilling takes Sure out for out number two. So two outs now and runner on third for Jerry Adair. Adair 0 for 1. They're trying to get the Orioles a little closer here. Oh, and Adair is a righty, so that will not take effect. It's only a lefty. 3-6. And that is going to be a fly ball to left. Rapolsky's there, and he makes the catch to end the inning. Let the Orioles get on the board with a single run, and it's 5-1 halfway through. Uh, and it'll be Jensen, Melzone, and Rapolsky, the heart of the Red Sox order. And here the home half of the fifth. Jensen 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. And he'll get the second hit. I mean, uh, no, actually, his first hit, sorry. So Jensen is on with a leadoff single in the fifth. Melzone up now, 0 for 2. And that's going to be an another hit there. Oh, no, it's not. As Schneider is able to come in and make a nice basket catch. As Jensen hurries back to first. He was around second. So one down now for, for uh, Rapolsky. Rapolsky has walked twice and he's scored twice. And he's going to walk for a third time. So Rapolsky... Has yet to have to swing the bat. And it'll be first and second. Looks like, oh, and they're going to have Jensen try to steal here. Do we want to have Jensen steal? No, Jensen has, yeah, he does have some ability. We'll, we'll, let, him, we'll let him try it here. Try to get into scoring position. I mean, into or a sacrifice. No, and he's going to be gunned down. Sometimes you got to go with it and try it, especially with a four-run lead. Why not? So two outs now. Hopefully that won't come back to bite the Red Sox. So Pagliaroni, he's one for one of the double walk and two runs batted in. And that's going to be our Fenway Park check here, 6-2. And that's going to be dribble in front of the plate. Trianos picks it up over to first, and that will do it. So we head to the sixth. And then we'll pinch hit for Barber. Let's see who we have here. Who the Orioles actually used in the game. So Stevens, Philly, Busby. So Stevens, Philly. So Philly actually got an official at bat. So Philly, Stevens, and then Busby. So I'm going to try to use Philly first if it looks good. So Philly. Yeah, we'll let Philly as a switch here. That makes sense. So Dave Philly will come in the pinch hit for Barber. So Barber's day is done. So Philly comes... You get 250 in 1961 with a homer and 23 runs batted in and 144 at bats. And it's going to be a range play at Fenway Park. And that is going to be a double. No, it's going to be taken away by Hardy. So a nice running catch by Hardy saves extra bases there. As Philly is retired. So Snyder up now. Getting a start today for the injured Dick Williams. He's 0 for 2 so far. And he'll line out to where it's at first for out number 2. So Jackie Brandt looking for his first start of the day 0 for 2. And He'll draw the walk. Second walk given up by Conley. 
So Conley definitely with his best outing of the season so far. 2-0 base runner, Wirtz holding him on. Robinson up now, route for two. Oh, and again, that's a good split. That would have been a lefty. He would have had a home run chance, but 3-1, and that is going to be a ground ball to second. Shilling over to Wirtz. And that will do it. So let's see here. So we're going to bring in Wilhelm. Here's their closer, though. No, not really a good not really a situation for him right yet. So we'll see what the computer pick. Dick Hyde. Lefty and a righty. One and two. 5.57. Oh, he's only pitched. Yeah, he didn't actually pitch in a game. He's only pitched 21 innings on the season. So I'm going to try to get somebody else here. Somebody else who would make more sense. West Stock. Yeah, we can go with that. He's a righty and he's got the area of three. All right, so West Stock is going to come in for the O's. Stock had a 5 0 record with three saves with 3.00 earn run average, 72 innings pitch, 58 hits allowed, 25 walks, 47 strikeouts. So he'll come in to face Wirtz here in the bottom of the sixth. To lead, he'll face Wirtz, Button, and Conley. And no, he takes ball three, so three and two to now on Wurtz. And Wurtz will fly out to right for round number one. Button up now, button 0 for 2 on the day. And it's going to be a range check at Fenway Park. And he's going to get his first base hit as it gets past Hansen. So button on for the first time today. Gentile will hold him on. And Conley, ooh, Conley not a very good bunter. We're going to let Conley hit away. Conley a capable hitter. Do we want to go hit and run? Uh, Conley strikes out too many times, so we're not going to go hit and run. We're just going to let him swing away. Up bar. Ooh, it's going to be a range play. And that is going to be a range play on the first base. Well, Gentile, very good range, though. He's able to get to it. And he makes the catch of the liner. Oh, and Button is doubled up. So that will do it for the Red Sox in the sixth. So we head to the seventh with the score of Boston 5 and Baltimore 1. So Gentile is 0 for 1 with a walk and a run scored. So all six runs started off with a walk. So, so Gentile up there. There's still plenty of gas left in the tank. And oh, not a good sign here as he walks. <laughs> Actually, Conley did walk another batter that didn't score, so not all the walks in the game. Just six, all six runs, though, were the walk. So, Triando's up now. Triando's one for two with a double. Conley looks at the runner, kicks and delivers. And there you go. No runs have scored on a strikeout. <laughs> That's just a possibility if they strikes out and he reaches first on a, either a pass ball or a wild pitch. as a possibility. Not a probability, but a possibility. So Conley up now. I mean, uh, Conley to face Hansen. 0 for 2. And that is going to be an error on Boot and Button. So Button commits his first error of the night. And it will put runners on first and second. Gentile up to second, so first and second with one down for Herzog. And 
no, he does not get, so it's going to be a full count now on Herzog. And he will fly out to her left for our number two. Gentile holds at second, not very much speed there. So two down now for Adair. And he's going to get a base hit. And they're going to hold Gentile at third, down by four. So that will load the bases. So the tying run will come to the plate. And we're not going to, that is not going to be West Stock. We want to get somebody with some power here, I would think. So I think we're going to have Earl Robinson come and hit. Why not? The third Robinson. So we get Brooks Robinson. And no Frank Robinson yet, but <laughs> Earl Robinson will come in and try to make this a tie ball game, or at least a little closer. So Robinson, 266 on the season, eight homers, 30 runs batted in, and 222 at bats. So Pagoni goes out to talk to Conley. There is action in the Red Sox pen. Does, does Pinky Higgins want to make the change? Hmm. No, he's going to let him pitch. Yeah, okay. So Conley looks in for the sign from Pags. Robinson steps in the box. Here's in the pitch. Fenway fans getting nervous here. And that's going to be a ground ball to Melzone at third. And what happened there? Obviously they got him. <laughs> Didn't see exactly what happened there. What happened there? Oh, he took, he took, uh, he took it to the bag himself. So, grounds out to Melzone at third. It takes it to the bag. And the Red Sox get out of it without any damage. So it remains 5-1 as we head to the bleed bottom of the seventh. So let's see who the Orioles are going to bring in now. They'll have Schilling and Hardy at the top of the order. I guess we can bring in Hal Brown. Why not? Hal Brown is a starter sometimes. I believe he is anyway. 167, 10 and 6 record on the actual season. One save, 3.18 earned run average, 167 innings pitch, 153 hits allowed, 33 walks, and 61 strikeouts. So Shelly looks in for the sign. I mean, uh, Brown looks in for the sign from Triandos. Shelly 1 for 3 on the day with an RBI. So the fans just got done singing Take Me Out to the Ball Game, which we're not going to sing. You can sing it in your head. So range plays, range play on. 1-3 one, three and 1-3, one, three. so it's going to be a range play on Robinson, the human vacuum cleaner. And, yep, he will get to it. Tough play, but he gets to it, as he does most tough plays. And makes the play with a genteel for out number one. So Hardy up now, 0 for 3. And it's going to be a range play at Fenway Park. Oh, it's going to be going to have our first rear play of the night. So line left field that dies for a sinking liner, resolve as a at sink, S7 range play. Check for injury to left fielder. So, ooh, the left fielder who is already a replacement for an injured left fielder. So we'll check that out. And that's going to be a failed range play on Schneider. Let's see if he gets injured. Yes, and Schneider is going to be injured and miss six games. So Schneider, who is filling in for the injured Dick Williams, gets injured himself and misses, will miss six games. So we will go with our second choice here, which was Gene Stevens. He's the best fielder. 
So yeah, Philly's already been used. We don't want to. Be, we probably only had 13 at bats. He's a horrible defender. The young Boog Powell. So Gene Stevens will come in. Play left field. So Schneider misses six games now. So Stevens, above average range, above average arm, and decent error rating. Takes the place of Schneider, who got injured on the on the fly ball by Hardy. So Hardy reaches. That's gonna be a they're gonna credit Hardy with a base hit there. Hardy's on with his first hit of the day as Gentile will hold him on. Jensen one for two with a walk and a run scored. Brown looks in for the sign. Looks at the runner. Kicks and delivers. And that's going to be a ground ball to first. Gentile will throw to second for one. Bat to first. And they turn the 3-6-3 double play to end the inning. So we head to the top of the eighth. Conley's still in there with a 5-1 lead as he got out of a jam last inning as managers rewarded him with another inning. So Gene Stevens getting his first at bat of the day after coming in for the injured Schneider. Hit 203 on the season with four homers and 28 runs batted in. Conley looks in for the sign from from Pagliaroni, here's the wind up in the pitch, and that is going to be a, no, it's not a walk, because that is a lefty. Righty would have been a walk, and he will fly out to Hardy in center for out number one. So Brant up now over two with a walk. He was the walk that did not score a run. Well, one of two walks now. And very good eye on Brant. He takes ball three. Conley thought he had strike three. So three and two the count now on Brandt. And he'll also fly out to Conley, uh, Hardy for out number two. So Hardy been busy out there in center. So Robinson up to the plate now. Conley's starting to tire a little bit, but Higgins is going to leave him in there. Robinson 0 for 3 on the day. And it's going to be a ballpark card at Fenway. And that will be a ground ball to short. Button handles this one cleanly over to first. And that'll do it for, I mean, I'm not Button. Um, Hanson. And that'll do it for the Red Sox in the, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. In the, that was uh, Button in the top of the eighth. So we head to the bottom of the eighth. Hal Brown out there for a second inning of work. Just pitch, pitched a scoreless bottom of the seventh. Melzone hitless on the day 0 for 3. A rare hitless day for Melzone. He's coming back down to earth. And that is going to be a fly ball to center. Brandt there to make the catch. One down. Ropolsky up now. He's... Does not have an official at bat. He's been up three times. He's walked three times, and he's scored two runs. And he'll foul one off. So he actually took a swing this time. And it looks like it's not going to be a walk. He's actually going to hit one in play. And Hansen will make the play for out number two. So Rapolsky finally hits the ball in play and is retired for the first time today. So he has an official at bat. So Pagliaroni up now. He's one for two with a double, a two run double, a walk and a run scored. And it's going to be a ground ball to Hanson at short over to first for out number three. So I'll do it for the Red Sox as we head to the ninth. Conley looking to close it out here. He'll face Gentile, Triandos, and Hanson. There is action in the Red Sox pen just in case Conley cannot finish it out. Pinky Higgins has Billy Muffet 
has also been known to start in the pen, warming up. On save situation. Stalin's been used quite a bit lately, I believe. I think he has and uh, doesn't have total faith in Stallard. As I do not either. <laughs> it's kind of like the Bob Stanley of uh, well, of the 1960s for the Red Sox. <laughs> so Gentile, 0 for 1 with two walks and a run score. The Orioles run so far. Conley looking to keep it that way. So it's going to be an error on the ground here, possibility. Please no button. And that is going to be a base hit to Schilling. And I don't think it's going to be an error. No. So it's going to be a base hit past Schilling. Tough, tough one there. So leadoff single for Gentile. And... I think they're going to replace him. He's a very slow runner. So they're going to bring on a pinch runner. No, they can't bring on Dick Williams. Dick Hall. So we'll bring on one of the Dicks, Dick Hall. So Dick Hall comes in the pinch run for Gentile. Much better runner. Although it uh, doesn't show here. Actually, I thought he was a four. That's why I put him in. In fact, I was positive he was a four. Or did I look at the bunting? I might have looked at the bunting. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to we'll bring in a... I think I did look at the bunting. So it's either going to be Jim Busby or Mark, Mark Breeding. We'll bring in Mark Breeding. Oops, so we waste a runner there. Here we go, a little bit faster there, not much. So Conley is starting to tire here. He's got maybe one more batter left before Higgins. Higgins on the top step, getting ready to pull him if Triandos does anything. Triandos one for three with a double and a strikeout. Here's the pitch. Breeding gets his lead off first. And that will be a, no, takes ball three. So three and two the count now. And that's going to be a fly ball to Hardy and center for out number one. So Higgins takes a step back now off the top step as Hansen comes to the plate now. Hansen 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Red Sox playing in double play depth. And no, he takes ball three again. So Conley definitely not happy with the umpiring here. But he will get Hanson to fly out to center. So two down now. So the Orioles down their last out. Red Sox fans on their feet cheering, looking to get a victory here. And their 18th win of the season. Herzog up to the plate now. He's 0 for 3 with an RBI. And do we want a pinch hit for Herzog? Not really much in there. Clint Courtney. No, I think Herzog's still a better hitter. Although he struggled. 291 hitter hoping to come up here. So the manager leaves him in. Let him hit here. 6 2, and that will be a 2 out walk. So Breeding moves up to second. So first and second. Two down. And Pinky Higgins moves one step up now. Jerry Adair up now. One for three. They will pinch hit for the pitcher spot if they get to that. And that is going to be a... Oh, no. He takes ball three. So full count now. So Conley very upset with the umpiring here. And that is going to be a ground ball to third. And that will do it as the Red Sox hold on to beat the Orioles 5-1. to one. Things got a little hairy. I believe it was in the seventh there when they loaded the bases with two down. The pinch hitter Robinson um, ground, uh, grounded the third. To 
in the inning to kill that threat. So 5-1. Some Mr. Brody snore over there as it is almost 2 o'clock here in New And we will be going to bed after this. All right, so Gene Conley proves his record two and four, pitches a shutout, allowing only three hits and one run. So definitely his finest outing of the season so far. Steve Barber takes the loss. No home runs for either team. Let's take a look at the box score here, and we'll move it over. All right, so let's do the pitching as we usually do. So Gene Conley improves the 2-4 and four ERA now down to 5.71. Nine innings pitched, just three hits allowed. One run, it was earned. Four walks, though, four strikeouts. Barber, 0-1, pitched five innings, allowed four hits, five runs, all five, five earned runs, six walks, one strikeout, all five of those runs. In fact, all six runs in the game for either team. Or the again, the result of a base on balls. So West Stock pitches an inning, allowing one hit, as Hal Brown pitched the final two innings, allowing just one hit, too. But the Red Sox scored all they did off all they needed off of Barber and take the game five to one. So for the Red Sox batting, Schilling one for four with an RBI. So the Stromsky did not get into this game. We decided to give him the day off. But he'll, I'm sure he'll be back to tomorrow's game. Or he'll make some kind of appearance anyway. Even if he doesn't start. which I think, But I think he will start. We'll check right after this. So Carol Hardy, one for four. Jackie Jensen, one for three with a run scored and a walk. Frank Marzone was hitless on the day, 0 for four. Rip Popolsky only had one official at bat. Did walk three times, 0 for one. Scored two runs. Pagaroni with a good day. One for three with a run scored and two two RBIs. Uh, uh, two on double. Also walked once. Vic Wirtz, 0 for two with a run scored and a walk. Don Button, one for three. Conley, one for three. Had a good day at the plate with two runs batted in. Got the Red Sox scoring started in the bottom of the second, I think it was. Uh... I think it was the second. But anyway, uh, so Conley helped his own cause there and pitched the pitched the gem. So Gene Conley is definitely going to be player of the game with a, with a complete game allowing just three hits and one run and helping himself at the plate too with two runs batted in. So for the Orioles, Rush Schneider 0 for 3 with a, and uh, he would leave the game late. Uh, he was subbing for the injured Dick Williams, and Snyder gets injured. He will miss six games. Gene Stevens came on after the injury and was 0-for-1 at the plate. Jackie Brandt, 0-for-3 with a walk. Brooks Robinson, hitless on the day, 0-for-4. Jim Gentile, 1-for-2 with a run scored and two walks. Dick Call came on as a... Pinch, well, not really. Actually, it was uh, Marv Breeding as a pinch runner. Gus Triandos, one for four with a double. Uh, Ron Hansen, 0 for four. Marty Herzog, 0 for three with an RBI and a walk. A Jerry Adair, one for four. Steve Barber, 0 for one. Dave Philly 0 for 1 is a pinch hitter. West Stock did not get in that fish, did not get in that bat. Earl Robinson came out with a big situation with the bases loaded and two down, but grounded out to the zone 0 for 1. Hell's, Hell Brown and Mar um did not get an official at bat, and Mar Breeding came out as a pinch runner, no official at bats. So the Red Sox take game two of the series. They took game one too, um, and they improve to 18 and 26 on the season they were actually 20 and 24 in the season and we'll take a look and see if Yastrzemski is back in the lineup for the next game which I believe is against the 
Kansas City Athletics. I think it's a doubleheader too. So I imagine it's going to be in at least one games. So this was from Sunday, June 4th of 61. Attendance only 14,409 here at Fenway. And I believe the next game is going to be on Monday, June 5th. So we will see. Yeah, first game of a doubleheader. It looks like it was a... Uh, not sure exactly when this time st the game started, but it was a double header. This was a night game, so I imagine it probably started like at five or so. All right, so let's check here and see if Yastrzemski is in the lineup. As we slowly scroll down here. Oh, yep, so Yastrzemski is back in the lineup. So I could be playing left and batting third. And Gary Geiger also back in the lineup at center. But the Red Sox with a great performance despite having two of their regulars not in the lineup. I mean, Geiger and Yastrzemski. And Joe Ginsburg is going to get a start behind the plate. So Mike Fornley is on the hill against Ray Herbert for the Athletics. So take care and God bless. And we will see you in game number 44. Five, I want to say. I think it was 45. Yeah, game number 45 of the Red Sox season where the Red Sox did win the first game 6-2. to two. So see if we can continue our, and get a two-game winning streak going. So take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.